Hey guys, Michael with armchairbuilder.com here. As a builder, one of the more common questions I get is, can I add a second floor addition to my existing house? So let me first say that usually building up instead of out is typically less expensive, especially when you're building a new house because the second floor adds square footage without adding the expensive items, foundation, basement floor, and roof. But in this case, these folks are trying to add the square footage they need without moving and they wanna add a second floor. So in this existing house case, going up isn't always the cheapest way to go. In this video, I'm gonna discuss the items that need to be reviewed to see if adding a second floor really makes sense financially. Why financially? Because really anything can be done, but the question is at what cost? The more rework and rebuilding that's required to accomplish the desired outcome, the more cost that's added. And then honestly, at some point, it just makes more sense to either move or build out instead of up if the local municipality will allow it. So the first thing I tell people to do is to get a copy of their house plans of their existing home. You know, the architectural drawings of the home that they're living in. This will tell you what the existing structure looks like behind the walls and below the ground. So we'll get into why you need this in a second, but how do you find the existing house plans? The house plans I grew up in as a kid, they were nailed to a stud beneath the basement stairs. But if you don't have a basement or if they're not there and you can't find these in this document with the rest of your home documents, you'll wanna take a trip down to the local building department. So when a builder or an owner builder applies for a permit to build a new house, they're typically required to submit a couple sets of architectural drawings to show in detail exactly what they're gonna build. And in many cases, the local building department will save a copy for future reference for instances like this when someone wants to do either make a repair or do some sort of addition. Okay, so why do we need to see the existing house plans? So the key to evaluating a second floor addition is to look at the existing structure to see what elements are good as is, and which will need to be beefed up once you add that additional weight. So the first thing we need to review is the foundation and footings. These were initially designed to just support a single story to the home, uh, the ranch home you live in. But will they support a second floor? Maybe. If not, the cost could be just too much to move forward on a second floor addition project. Why? Because the footings are typically challenging to get to, which can add a great deal of cost to the project. Okay, so I think it's really important to really understand this footing sizing thing. So let's take a look at our current open book build project kind of as, as an example, right? The building code calls out a minimum footing size based on certain criteria. One of the main criteria to this is the soil bearing capacity or how much weight the soil can hold up. So for our home, it was 2000 pounds per square foot. So the building code calls out the following footing sizes based on the number of floors and foundation type and that soil bearing capacity based on the 2019 Residential Code of Ohio, which is basically the 2018 International Residential Code. So this is typical light frame construction, no brick, and I'm gonna put the link to the online code below the video here, um, and it's on page 219 of the code if you wanna reference that. So for a single story home with a basement, 14 inches wide by six inch deep minimum size footing, two story home with a basement, 16 inches wide by six inches deep, and a three-story with a basement 19 inches wide by six inches deep. So you can kind of see as we build the house up toward the sky, the footings get larger to accommodate the additional weight. So most builders will increase the size of their footings to be larger than the code minimum. And this adds just a, a factor of safety, right? So for the open book build, which is a ranch home, we could have made the footings all the way down to 14 inches wide and just six inches deep. But instead, we went with 16 inches wide by eight inches deep, which is quite a bit larger than the required uh, in the code. So in this case, if someone wants to add a second floor later to the open book build house, the existing footings would be okay. So once we've reviewed the footings, it's time to take a look at the beams and headers throughout the home. Now remember, these structural elements were designed based on a single story home. So once you put that additional weight of the second floor and all of its contents up there, the structure will need to accommodate this additional weight. Okay, so let's take a look at the open book build home project again as an example to get an idea of what changes would need to be made to make that second floor addition after the fact. So first, let's take a look at the basement beam. This is a three-ply beam that runs through the middle of the basement from the front to the back of the home. The structural element carries half of the first floor weight. And when we add the second floor, the floor joists up there will be run in the same direction as the basement. Why? Because this is most efficient way of building this house and that's pretty typical for this kind of a home here. So if we add the second floor, the weight on the basement beam will double. So we'll need a structural engineer to resize that basement beam 
to carry this additional weight. So one more thing we need to consider for this example are the pad footings below the basement beam and those columns that support the basement beam. Are these 36 inch square concrete pad footings large enough to carry the resulting increased load from the basement beam above? And are those steel columns capable of carrying the additional load or do we need to replace them with something more substantial? So this is, these are the items that the structural engineer will look at and also look at the headers above the windows and doors on the first floor to ensure they're adequate as well. So as you can see, making the decision to add a second floor to an existing home is not a simple one. We need to carefully review the existing structure and determine what adjustments will need to be made to safely add the additional weight from above. And once those structural changes are identified, we can decide whether those costs make sense or not. And for those of you that are looking into building or remodeling your home, we have some great resources to help you lower the cost of your project at armchairbuilder.com. So please stop by and see me when you get a chance. Thanks for watching.